This video is all about how to increase your overhead squat with steel mace vinyasa. All right, I have Coach Rena here, who is a steel mace vinyasa facilitator on our teacher training team. And Rena is going to be demonstrating an overhead squat with three levels of difficulty. So Rena, go ahead and place your dowel directly on top of your head and then measure to see that your arms are shoulder distance apart. So we'll bring it here, space out the hands just a tiny bit more, and then punch your uh, dowel just straight overhead. So beginners will start with an overhead squat that looks something like this. So generally, we'll start about here. And what we're looking for is a proper hip hinge. We're looking for crown to coccyx alignment. We're looking for shoulder flexion, shoulder range of motion here, and then good ankle mobility. So general population are gonna be here. Go ahead and stand back up and rest for a moment. And then next progression of the overhead squat test, which is a functional movement screen we teach in our steel mace vinyasa 100 hour curriculum. And we also teach this in all of our uh, steel mace vinyasa and steel mace hit classes at Flow Shala. So go into a full overhead squat to your full depth here. So you'll notice here in Rena's full flat-footed squat, <clears throat> let's see if we can drop you down just a little bit more. Cool, so here is her full end range and then go ahead and come back up. So let's assess the order of operations. So first things first, we wanna look for a hip hinge. So just have you do a couple rounds of hip hinging. So just a couple reps. So we've got our hip hinge, and then go ahead and bring the dowel overhead. And then we've got hip hinge into knee bend, and we're looking for that ankle mobility. Oftentimes the thoracic spine will concave kind of round forward, but we're, what we're training in Stomace Vinyasa is to keep the spine erect. So I'm gonna demo a quick staff strike, and Rena will be blocking here. So I'm making sure I have eye contact. She's pressing the staff away, one more. And then go ahead and come into your overhead squat and then lock. So she's really strong. Go ahead and do one more at the bottom. She's really strong down there and nice and stable. So I have four steel mace vinyasa exercises that will help you increase mobility in all of the ranges necessary to improve your overhead squat test. So mind you, Rena is very experienced in this. So if you're beginning with some of these exercises, I highly recommend coming to Flowshala Virtual and training the basics first, but I wanna show you where you can go with this. So Rena, go ahead and take a shin box position, uh, facing whichever way you'd like. Notice how Rena enters from a flat-footed squat. She's moving mindfully here. So in her shin box position, her shins are parallel, and then take the arms straight ahead, and then go ahead and rise up into shin box hip extension with shoulder pack. So here we're looking to see that the lats are engaged, the glutes are connected with the inner core as well and the obliques. We're seeing that transverse abdominus is drawing inward. And we have this lovely uh, costumer muscle suit to really identify the musculature because we wanna see that things are fully engaged. Triceps are on as well. Go ahead and take one more rep of that unloaded. Awesome and then come back down, and then I will hand you the mace. Go ahead and place your mace in a reverse guard position, uh, mace on the left, and then you can start by just rising up and then pressing the mace into horizontal overhead press. <clears throat> so here we're looking for neutral wrists. We're looking to see that the shoulders are packed, the glutes are still on and firing here, and if I was to push her from either side, she would remain stable because she has maximum fascial tension. Go ahead and perform a few reps here, Rena. You can feel free to incorporate a power breath. And I love just seeing the anatomy on this as well, on this movement, because we're looking to see that uh, everything is active. So go ahead and pause on your next one. Go ahead and go up. So think about squeezing these together here to create that um, action of adduction here in the thighs and then cinch everything in here. Good, and then go ahead and do one more repetition. Notice how she's coming from uh, the reverse guard position, carrying it straight up, ripping and crushing as the mace goes overhead, and then come back down. And then go ahead and switch sides. So ideally we would do a shin box switch, but actually let's, let's do this so we can see the opposite direction here. Find your rever reverse guard position, point the toes and propel your hips forward. So thrusting, finding that hip drive, Press the mace up and overhead, squeeze everything together, find the adduction, press on the top of the foot here. Good, and just keep performing a few reps here. Notice the methodical nature of her arriving at her landmarks. This is really key, is drilling those fundamentals 
piece by piece so that eventually when you take the load away, what's left is greater hip mobility and greater shoulder flexion. So we can see exactly how that might translate into the overhead squat because we're targeting areas uh, under load, areas that more normally would be just performed with mobility, we're adding a slight load. Last one. One thing to think about here, as you arrive at the top, there's this rip sensation, so it should be pushing out against me and then crushing in and then even kind of bending the mace in half as well. Awesome work. Go ahead and come back down and go ahead and come to standing however you'd like in your most fu functional way and rest and we'll move into our next exercise. So the next exercise we'll teach you is yogi squat to flag, option for 360. So start with the feet hip distance apart. Start with a full grip confirmation, shoulder packed. If I was to push Rena on either side, she's not gonna move because there's full dynamic tension running through the body. She's actually beginning with her full glute engagement here and core activation. From here, start to spiral your elbows up as you drive your mace forward. Notice the leverage in the mace here and then find your hip hinge. Sit the hips back. As you arrive at the bottom, find a shoulder pack. So push down, yes, good, and then rise back up. And perform about three to five repetitions here. And each time she can increase her depth. If we're looking at her uh, lumbar rhythm here, her pelvic and lumbar rhythm, we're seeing that at the very bottom of her squat, she can hold activation and extension here and push out against me hard here and find the torque, yes. Versus if she was to drop all the way down into a flat-footed squat and her tail would tuck under, we're losing that element of thoracic extension here, nice. Cool, let's do one more, level one. So a key thing we teach in steel mace vinyasa is adding layers of complexity to the movement. So Rena, go ahead and go into your 360 swing, block, dump, pull, and then into a two-handed flag squat press. Awesome. So notice as she integrates her 360 swing, she's increasing her shoulder flexion range of motion dynamically, and she's visiting the uh, actual position of the overhead squat. She's going to depth, so she's training that repetitively so that she gets that uh, in her nervous system, the ability to find both mobility and stability at the bottom of the squat. Go ahead and switch sides when you're ready. All right, notice the focus here. There's something really soothing about swinging a mace in a 360 degree swing around the body. It really clears any stagnant energy around the body and it can really help you feel more competent with tools, which is essential for working through any somatic blockages and uh, essentially working through any stuck like fight or flight energy. So if you're oscillating between fight and flight and you haven't had an opportunity to actually wield a weapon, this can be a really soothing way to work through any stagnant energy or any somatic blocks. This next exercise is Warrior II to Skandasana, and it will allow you to really increase your knee flexion and the depth in which you're able to come down into a single-legged squat. So Rena, go ahead and take a dynamic Warrior II lunge position. So elevate, lift, open out, and land, and then press your mace up and overhead. So here, this is a great way to increase the uh, external rotator range of motion. So Rena, let's do a little torque check. Push against me here hard, good, and then push against me here. Good, and then deepen your knee flexion here, pack your shoulders, and get really solid in your back glute. Fire that on, and then spiral this back thigh in. Yes, good, and then just stay in the static variation. Let's just do a couple reps of the Warrior II lunge. And applying our self-defense to the lunge. Go ahead and do one more, and then I'll go into striking here. So as she presses up, she is solid here. Dynamic tension running throughout. Do one more. Good. <clears throat> and her hands are a little close together. Ideally, we'd have uh, striking with two wooden dowels, uh, but this is just to demonstrate how solid this form is. Cool. And then go ahead and bring your mace into side flag position on the right side. So in Warrior II, we're looking for that dynamic tension. It's open hip. Go ahead and extend your mace all the way out. and then. Draw the weight into the back leg, come into Skandasana, and press your mace out to two-ended flag. So bring it through the center line, press out. So here, we're looking for training that knee flexion. Go ahead and just do a few reps, repetitions here. So we're looking to condition the external rotators here. And the mace serves as a lever so that we can bring the body more upright, which recruits the multifidus. Nice. Let's have you do two more reps. <clears throat> 
And notice Rena has a really great adductor range of motion here. She's really limber here because she's trained this under load. The tendency is the feet like to scoot apart on really limber people. So Rena, I'm gonna have you scoot this foot in just a hair so that you can stay a little more stable. And then come into Skandasana and then hold when you're about halfway down. Push against me here, good, and lean back against me here. Yes, pack your shoulders, good. Micro bend the elbows just a hair, yes. And then pack those shoulders hard, good. And then drive up and back into your warrior two. And then if you have any other variations that you'd like to add to this, you can. So adding complexity, things like drop swings, things like horizontal overhead. So I'm just gonna let Rena freestyle here. I'll get out of her way. So adding a 360 swing. <clears throat> training the movement under load, training slight complexity. She's even able to hold it with one hand. <clears throat> nice, good recovery. Cool. And then let's have you face the opposite way just so we can see the musculature in the back body. So just a couple pointers on what's going on in the back body. Uh, go ahead and perform your regular warrior two presses. So here we're looking to see that the back piriformis is on and firing, squeeze it on. We're looking for just a slight little bit of internal rotation here and then we're looking for a shoulder pack. Cool. And just one more rep here. Awesome, good. And then go ahead and bring your mace into your front hand, find your warrior two. And then shift the weight into the back leg, come into Skandasana. So as she enters Skandasana, we're looking to see that the multifidus is active and the erectors are active to allow her body to maintain an upright crowned coccyx alignment stance. And then one more time. And here we're looking to see that the back leg is maintaining active torque and there's a relationship and a dialogue happening between the outer femur and the upper spine. The fourth exercise of the sequence is the chair squat with overhead press. Rena, go ahead and grab the mace and I'll have you face this way so we can see your side your diagonal view. Uh, place your mace in reverse guard position and let's ensure you have grip confirmation, shoulder pack, glute engagement. Step the feet together. So we're conditioning the yoga asana which is chair pose. So in a, in a chair pose, the feet are all the way to get touching. Let's bring the heels a little bit closer to here. And essentially I'll just demo behind her. We're looking for this position here. This is the classical asana form, and this is the more athletic variation. So uh, Matt, Rena, go ahead and press your mace up and overhead, and then start to lower to your version of a chair. So we're looking to see that the knees are pressing in strongly here, and we've got a nice straight line from the arms all the way down through the trunk and into the glutes, we have crowned coccyx alignment and then come back to reverse guard. We'll perform a couple repetitions here. So I really find this a, a valuable exercise because of the action of the knees drawing inward and we're working the internal rotators instead of just the external rotators. So really bringing a, a amount of balance to the stabilizers within the hip girdle. The next progression, actually we'll have you switch sides so you can stay even. We'll go to the next progression soon. So here, every time she presses the mace up and overhead, she has an opportunity to create more shoulder flexion range of motion, and she's training her multifidus and her paraspinals to be able to be ex in that extended position. <clears throat> nice. And then switch sides. The next progression when working on ankle mobility is to perform the same chair squat. And at the very end, you'll notice Ren is gonna pop her heels up, squeeze her knees together, maintaining stability here, and then drive back up, heels come down, park it in reverse guard. And she can even visit like as low as she wants to go in that. So I'll let her determine what feels good for her, maintaining balance, good, squeeze the knees together like you have a, a piece of paper in between your knees as you drive up. Awesome, and let's switch sides. So notice she's integrating her power breath. She's got all of her mechanics of steel mace vinyasa, grip confirmation, shoulder pack, crown to coccyx alignment. She's got her hip drive at the top. She's got her midfoot balance. Last repetition. She finds her hip hinge. She squeezes the knees together. The flesh of the knees are touching the entire time and we're looking for that heel pop at the very bottom. Awesome. Come up with control and then switch sides. <clears throat> so draw the shoulder up, down, and back, find neutral, and just perform just a couple reps so we can see 
Sometimes just be mindful that there might be an asymmetry on one side of the body. So one side might be easier than the other if we have more strength in the upper back muscles or even if we have a slightly curved spine. So I recommend to keep this shallow and just work on, let's actually do more shallow variation on this next one. So you can modify by just a slight heel pop and just working the thighs inward. Nice work, Rena. So there you have it. Those are four exercises that you can use to start increasing your overhead squat performance and increasing your range of motion so that you can avoid injury and maintain power and maximize your time under tension.